Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I'm Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Benici, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail. And our passion is sharing that with you every week. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I just good. realized my, my video was off. It's okay. It's, we're, we're all like that. It's, uh, it's like the theme of the pandemic, right? You're on mute. There's yeah. something wrong. You can't. <laughs> I know. You would think that it would be like nailed down by now. Yeah. But no. Not the case. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Not even close to being nailed down. Are you kidding me? I think I'm, going, I think I'm regressing. I really do. I, th- I honestly think I'm regressing. I really do. Completely yeah, it's gone possible. the possible. Are you still oh making homemade wine? Maybe is that like, is that part of it? I don't know. Oh, Lisa, how are you? <laughs> no, I, I don't make wine anymore. You know what? I is? like her I already. Is wrong? I barely even met her for 30 seconds. I like her already. <laughs> well, it's, it's he I'm stopped happy making wine. Because we you know drink it all, that's why. Well, yeah, Dinda and probably the, a couple of you probably did get into that, I'm assuming. You know yeah. what happened? I got gout about, I don't know, eight years, nine years ago, right? So yeah. at that point, like I, you know, like two bottles, you know, a bottle every two days to like maybe a bottle a month. That's how tragic it is to me. It's very sad. Okay. Very sad. Well, we enjoyed it in our 20s. I think you said to us, if you guys want some wine, and I think you probably were thinking like a little bit of wine, just help yourself. And then that was it. You never say that to 20 year olds. Well, the thing is, I'm not that delusional. First off, I was 20 at one time. Two, I know the Favreau family. So let's be serious. And by that point, uh, Daryl had been in the house long enough to know that she was going to be a bit of a disaster. So quite, I was ready for you guys at some point. (laughs) <laughs> you know what's funny though at least we were talking i i talked to i was talking to amelia and i said hey do you know how i just invited on the show and this and that and yeah. i told her the link that you know we had known each other so so the story so everybody who's listening gets it yeah. i invited at least onto the show not knowing who she was like seriously like no clue right because it does not say been to ken's basement you know, in, no. you know <laughs> i don't think anybody Nobody I should know. put that on their LinkedIn. <laughs> Nobody. It's probably if not the have, smartest thing to do, but that's fine. I've been if to Ken's basement inclined. and I'm not putting it on my LinkedIn ever. Not ever. <laughs> well, you've been to the new basement. That was the old house. So it's even worse. <laughs> so anyway, I, 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 and then I told Amelia and she goes, what's her name? I said, it's Elisa. And I said, she said she was at the house, you know, because she knew Dinda, Daryl Lee. Dean does what the girls, but my godchildren are called Daryl Lee. So for yeah. a year, I still call Dinda Dinda. It's not Daryl Lee, it's Dinda. Anyway, because they couldn't say Daryl Lee film. Another story. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, I tell, she remembers you, right? And she's going through, oh yeah, these be over all the time. All right. So and then I go tell Vanda, who's Elisa's best friend's uh, sister-in-law. Um, <laughs> and I was going, okay, guess who's coming on the show? And she goes, okay, who? I said, she's like COO, BC Food and Beverage. Uh, she goes, Elisa. I think like fuck how do you guys don't remember this like is we, why am i the only one that doesn't remember anything <laughs> so then i went to paul thing. and that's where my odds were because paul doesn't remember anything either so it's all good Fair. okay good i'm glad it sorted out well that's how it's so phil so you know the story that's that's how i i don't remember elisa sorry lisa i don't remember any of the kids no, that used to come okay. over because it was a long time ago but too busy i thought that was wine. super funny because i was so excited to have you on because i'm, I'm yeah, reading a know. comment you made on on a topic i'm thinking shit you know she comment I'm, wait, I'm, wait, I'm but we're, but we're still on. excited to have you on so <laughs> oh, <I'm just> thrilled. <laughs> yeah because i don't right, even know yeah. if the story made it not as exciting or more exciting made it exciting for amelia and vanda they thought that was really cool i thought it was exciting laura thought it was cool too yeah but you i don't understand why you guys would think it's cool if you know me like it's not the same like i don't think the wives are excited for me either because they thought it was cool that you came on not that Probably because they're talking to Phil, not I've got nothing to do with that. But, that's but the funny. wives aren't even my wife isn't that 
you know, they don't listen to the podcast. It's, oh, it's I know. Thing. Amelia so doesn't listen to any of the. Well, she Banda just gets excited Amelia when people she one. likes is on the show, right? Like that's yeah. kind of how it works. So that's they might now. They might too. now because I'm on the show, Kenny. So they. Might. Oh, I'll bet you fifty to one, hundred <laughs> percent. Vanda, yeah. who's probably never listened, and I know Amelia has listened once because I was in the car with her because she liked one of the people that was on. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the odds are super high that yes, you're getting listened to. Ooh. Oh, then I'll go. put the I'll put the basement thing on my LinkedIn profile then. It'll oh, be no. official. You got to put it no. way down though, right? Because that's like a long time ago. No, no, no. It, yeah, <laughs> really. Like long. seriously, how long did, that's got to be? The kids were well. The kids, kids were born obviously when Dina was in the house, so and that's got to be like two thousand. No, maybe even before that. Be Late nineties. Probably. I don't remember how old the kids maybe were. Maybe even prior to that. I don't know. Everything's no, 10 my, years ago for me. So yeah, trust me. It, it's old, the yeah. older you get, you just really yeah. hang on to that number. Yeah. yeah. You go, yeah. You just go to five years ago, even if you really want to. It makes you feel a little better. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be it's gotta be 20. Well, my Carly's 25, 26, whatever she is. Yeah, she I was, was gonna say three. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Hard to believe. Anyway, that's six minutes of absolutely nothing. No, 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 no. Actually, it's kind of interesting, but but put a bow on it. Yeah. So why don't you introduce Elisa while you're at it? So I sort of already have. So Elisa yeah. is now survivor the of Kenny's basement. Yes, which, and Kenny's and... homemade wine, which is like a whole different level of wow. <laughs> but Elisa is the CEO of BC Food and Beverage, which is an organization that represents BC food and beverage processors, if I'm not mistaken, and manufacturers. Yes. Um, so what we'll do with you, young lady, is as we go through this, you'll let us know about that. But if you want, okay. like who you are, uh, where you came from, what you've done, how you got to here, and then whatever else you want. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do the basement anymore if you don't want to, because we already took care of that. But no, well, I think that's there's a good highlights that point. I've missed. I'm good with it. So it's it your show like, now. Was, so so you drank some of Kenny's wine, and <laughs> then, then the basement once, once the site returned and, and you weren't blind okay, anymore. So between birth and about 20, 21, 22, it was something like that, I'm guessing, 23. Yeah, they're, you know, oh gosh. That's so Where to fun. start? Where to like, start? Honestly. I mean, born and raised in East Vancouver. And I linked that actually to being in the food business. I think it kind of gave me my roots. I wasn't expecting it to, but now that I'm in it, totally um, right. yeah, like, you know, I grew up in a working class neighborhood, a ton of people that came from all over the world. Um, I remember having, you know, on Facebook, they used to have those lists of all the different foods of the world that you've tried and I mm -hmm. sort of was like oh, I'll probably have some on there and I me and my brother both went through the list and we were so high on it and it wasn't because we had traveled all over it was because we grew up in East Bend mm. and I used to kind of smell my way around the neighborhood to see who was cooking what and and literally would show up on the door just to be like oh what's going on so I could try all the foods and stay for dinner oh. and yeah I, I don't know amazing. I just sort of feel like I grew up with people that yeah. that we're in the the food space in the sense of community. Like it was such. Did a you grow up in the war part. zone, Laura, or were you like where were you? No, like, I had like twenty eighth. I was up the hill, like right by Windermere. Okay. Did anybody so because who's Phil listening stayed will at have our no place, idea, so. but you know that's Phil yeah. will know now. So Phil, because it's not it's about I ten blocks do. from where we are right now. Yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah, Phil will know do. because he's actually yeah. stayed in the East Van. So we're making him an yeah. East Banner. Perfect. I'm, making Phil and I'm actually a fan. I, I love it. Like and for the so, same reason, loves the restaurants. Loves yeah, the food. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. the last time I got even smarter and I stayed right off Commercial Drive, so I yes. could be right by the food. <laughs> there's just there's a lot of good food things going on, and just good people in the food business. They're kind of my oh. favorite people. Mm -hmm. So sorry to interrupt because I just wanted mm -hmm. to give so Phil no new it's proximity okay. roughly yeah, where, awesome. where you are. Okay, which is yeah. just up the street. Yeah. So I kind of from there, I mean, gosh, so many years of I was in education, started off there, um, working in the inner city, again, really heavy on the community aspects, um, left, went into tech and was in sales and marketing, mm. did that for many years. And I, yeah, I just kind of, I ended up doing, I was working for myself, just sort of started going towards the food business and mm -hmm. odd things popping up here and there and ended up working for a few years. Uh, with a food processor and really was grateful just to get into the business. And I mean, I was really, I got into everything, you know, if there was 
staff away and we still had production to go through. It was like everybody who was in, you know, working oh, in the office awesome. went down there and helped. And it was just, I just fell in love with the business at that time. Um, and then BC Food and Beverage, I was actually a member of theirs and I really liked the organization and job came up and I thought, hmm, like, maybe I'll do that. And that's, so I landed there three days before we went into lockdown for COVID. Um, awesome. Yeah. So it was, it was an interesting experience because it was, you know, here you are starting a new job, um, whole new group of people. And then all of a sudden we're in this very vulnerable time with also, you know, 450 members who are also in this really precarious time for their business and just feeling vulnerable generally. So I sort of was, yeah, I felt like I was dropped in the deep end and of course, figuring out everything on my end as well. And wow. here I am, I, you know, just now getting back to, we had our first big live event last week, which was yeah. great. That was super yeah, cool. Yeah, we saw it all over LinkedIn. Looked really cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was excited about that. I got to spend a little bit of quality time with Arlene Dickinson, which was like, a, you know, one of those things a long time ago. That's that pretty I was like, cool. I, I hope I meet her one day. So I think I like just secretly planned this whole event so I could possibly spend time <laughs> with her, but it worked out. People liked the event. So yeah, I just, I love that. And I love the small and medium business as well. Like that's, mm -hmm. it really does. It feels like home to me working mm -hmm. in this business, you know, and I care. I cry when places go out of business and that's just the reality of yeah. business. That's been, that's been quite a bit in the last little while too, which isn't. Yeah, it's been tough fun. to see, you know, there's a lot of pressures and it's just sort of when you think, oh, this is it. There's not going to be any more pressure. There's like the next thing that seems to something happen. Something new. And the next thing. Right. Yeah. And, and like Such a resilient. something like unprecedented is a word that nobody ever wants to use again, right? Because you're just no. like, what? And then what? Yeah. And then what? And then more? Yeah. Like, oh my God, like, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's just, like, it's just it's been, crazy. yeah. Yeah, and the, the pivot, like it's, you know, I think people are very dizzy probably from the pivot that has gone. It's, you know, circular yeah. pivots down at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people are resilient though. I have to say, like, there's a lot of grit in our industry, especially BC, so many small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they just keep evolving and it's amazing. The community is so great too. That's what I like. They come together. The whole food, food, food industry is like that. We, I always tell people that, <clears throat> especially yeah. the ones who are retiring, oh, I retire and think, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to golf and do this. I'm thinking, oh, you're full of shit. You're never going to be away from this. No. Like, it's too nice. First off, like in the natural space, especially like really cool people. Yeah. Um, small business, like on the, on the processing side, because most of our processing here is not, um, it's not for craft and for places mm -hmm. like yeah. that. It's for small to medium. Yeah, so yeah. again, a whole yeah. bunch of cool people on yeah. all the sides, whether it's in packaging, Cause I know you've talked to like Hayden, like who's awesome. And like, there's just yeah. so many really, really nice people. Yeah. And, you know what it reminds you of? Like, cause remember I grew up in trail, right? So, which yeah. is a suburb of East Van. Then I moved into yeah. East Van. Yeah. And it does, it feels like the industry, like it feels like to me, everybody was born in East Van or trail. Like that's, I swear to God, everybody feels yeah. that way to me. Like just that, you know, you don't know anybody yeah. and they're friends within three minutes. Right. It's, I get that. I yeah. love that feeling. It really is. And I, and I do think like, I really, link like how I grew up and what I felt like growing up in my community feels the same in the food and beverage industry and they're just yeah so many great people and decent really really decent people who really care and you know care about their employee care about their communities and it's nice and it's sort of I always wish there was more consumer awareness around it I mean I hope mm -hmm. we do start to see more and more of that because I think people if they knew that about the people making their food, they're, they would support those local ones and look for them a lot more than what they do. You think do. that's coming? Do you, have you, because we've only been in this side for a couple of years. Do you, do you see that or feel that, or is that just a hope and a prayer? Um, I'm an eternal optimist. So I, and I also think if, I don't know, there's a part of me that, you know, I believe that. I think there's a lot of people that believe that, that will be sort of pushing the snow plow that way. Um, but I think it's also up to industry to make sure that we're doing right. that. And of course, we're also in an industry that's very busy. People are wearing many hats. It's not enough to put a sticker on something and say, buy local. Like the people who will notice that and buy it are probably the people that are like me who. Yeah, you're, you're converting the converted. 
Yeah, and I think right. there is a lot of room though to to really teach people. And I know when I was in elementary school as a kid, we used to go on field trips of processing plants to see how things were made. And it made a really big impression on me as a kid. And I Apparently. remember being really interested in it. And, and, you know, I think things like that, we have to start young with kids and show them how things are made. And same way we show how things are grown and, and farming and agriculture. And yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity. So uh, yes, I think my answer is, I do yeah. think it'll change. I, I think you're there. Like, I think, I think you're oh, right. Like, coming to even, you. even in Toronto, so I'm based in Toronto. Yeah. And we don't have the same, we do have some local, but you know, geographically we're, we're much more spread out. And so yeah. it allows for, you know, it's much, it's a much better place for big companies to, you know, kind of put up chains and things like that. But yeah. during the pandemic, you heard that in every neighborhood that we have, right? Like every, yeah. we've got all these little, like little Italy and, you know, mm -hmm. like kind of upper Toronto, Bayview Village. And you can hear people going, no, no, I'm, I'm going to the local guy. So I'm going to skip, yeah. you know, the big places that can all, I know they can make me food, but these guys, yeah. I'm going to buy from them. And then I had a friend who didn't really ever do that, right? Always wanted to go to chain and she wound up buying her groceries through her local um, restaurateur because it helped yeah. him with volumes, right? Like she actually got that into it. She was like, Okay, so I'm going to buy all my meats from him too, because it helps yeah. him with his buy. It keeps, makes things cheaper. So me and the entire block got in on the, on the menu thing. So that way he stays in biz, it keeps his costs lower. Right. And you're like, wow, yeah. like that is, so if, I feel like if Toronto can do that, it's, it's a sign that local is coming, you know, that, that people are, you know, that the awareness is there. Cause like, if I had to measure the two, Toronto is definitely not a local, we do, some of us do buy local, but a lot of us are in, you know, they're indifferent, right? It's, it's more about convenience, right? So. Yeah. And I, you know, it's interesting, even the, the restaurant aspect, I think that yeah. actually really helped move that, that support system, because I know if people always have a favorite restaurant, they may mm -hmm. not have like one favorite product from a, a retail yeah. perspective, but when they realized that their favorite restaurant was at risk of going out of business, they were like, how can we rally around this restaurant? <laughs> Please don't and, go. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. we started getting restaurants listing local products because they wanted mm -hmm. to help them because they also had, especially a lot of the, you know, the sort of restaurants that were using, you know, whole and fresh products and, and local themselves. So they right. started carrying local products so people could start to pick up groceries there. And I mean, all of a sudden we have a new avenue of retail that's created, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's kind of, I mean, people, I mean, myself, I'm, you know, I will be lazy if I'm out for dinner and I know I can pick up five items that are in my groceries. I will do that because, it's there and I'll buy Why them. Not? Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think yeah. you'll, I, I think we'll start to see more places that sell multiple things in their store. And it's not just, you know, it's more of that enjoyment. And I think sometimes maybe those local products belong there where, you know, there's a, a grand opening of a, a, in Langley this week, provisions market, and it's all locally um, sourced products, but they'll have food products there plus art products. And, you know, it's all different things they'll have mm. there, but it all helps. And yeah. when people, they do get into the bigger retailers and people recognize them, they've tried them and they'll support them at that point. So I think there's just a lot That's of awesome. avenues that have opened up, which is great. Um, yeah. If that's one thing the pandemic did, it definitely helped yeah. that side of it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Can, can I ask, so I, I want to go back because you've got such a, a cool background. Um, the jump from... Like physically behind me right now? Like, uh, yeah, no, kidding. that's cool too. But <laughs> but but um, going from... Focus on like, LinkedIn for the moment. I know, I know, I know. But, but for going from like a school board to then um, marketing communications and then jumping yeah. into the, the, um, the BC food and beverage... Yeah, they're they're kind of amazing leaps. A little different, they, right? I mean, you've done a yeah. bunch of different things on this thing. Like we're they're, all about the journey. We we love we love these things, all right? Yeah. So we're so curious what's going on there. That you know, clearly you you kind of knew where you were going. So I'm I'm just curious. 
Did I though? That is the question. Well, did you though? Um, I was going to ask that too. Are you sure? Because <laughs> you went, you went. You I feel a back, lot of pressure now. Oh, I didn't, explain I didn't, yourself, didn't, Elisa. What, what is it? Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll just put Kenny on mute for a second. I, I didn't mean for him to turn that into springing a trap on you. I, I really was genuinely. Oh no, curious. it's okay. I was agreeing with him too. I was like, wow, this is a lot of pressure that I like. Had an He's from East Van. She's fine. Relax. <laughs> it's not, we're not, it's not Ontario it people. It all started off, Phil, that I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I went to school where, where my best friend was going to school. That's how it all started. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I had a natural, when I went into education, my dad's you know, retired teacher now, you know, he said to me, don't go into education. It's bureaucratic. Like so he, he wanted me to go into anything else except mm -hmm. the school system. Mm -hmm. I loved the community aspect of school. Um, I love, I don't know, it was all about communication there. And it sort of gave me that, that foundation, I guess, um, when I was there. And then I had a friend who was in tech and she said, I really think you should go into sales and marketing. And I was like, well, I can't go into sales and marketing. I don't have a background in that. And the team within the tech sector that I, where, or where I was going was having some issues on their team behaviorally, I'll say, I don't know how else to put it, but they were okay. interested in my background that I had in education. Okay. And basically they were like, we're going to give you a chance and you're going to sort of help out in this area. So that was not a very fancy way to get into it, but it got me in there. Um, That's cool. But marketing, That's perfectly marketing was communications and sales was yeah. too. It was communications yeah. and it was community. Um, and that sort of has just been the thread all the way through. Um, when I had my son, I worked for myself just because I had to and mm -hmm. needed that flexibility. And then, yeah, I started writing when I was at home and bored and needed something to do. My brain, I'm a constant learn. Like I just learn. I like whatever it is. I just like feed, feed, feed. Yeah. I'm a bit of a cliff clave in that way. I have a lot of mm -hmm. random knowledge that I think is interesting, but not everybody else. Um, yeah. And then it just sort of grew and it's just sort of, they sort of don't match, but they totally match. It, they've all had that thread of, yeah, communication, community, and just. Yeah, but that makes sense to me. That See, actually does. Like, you, that, that's, you that's what's you, so that does make total sense. Yeah. It makes total yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean, to tell you the truth, like even when we're hiring, like, and Phil's probably done it too, but if I'm looking at people for sales roles and they mm -hmm. have no sales experience, but they yeah. do have um, an English degree, which yeah. I know people think really, yeah, because speaking English in Canada is not the worst thing you could be doing, writing and, writing and speaking. If they come from education, why? Because they've had to corral 30 cats. Yeah. or 25 cats or whatever you also, they, you yeah. know, and, and in there. Like so the, it's a whole two. different perspective, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a good thing to have as a base for, you can learn the sales. I mean, there are yeah. naturally gifted sales, but you saw Jake this past weekend. Like Jake yes. is like on fire, wired yeah. two, four, seven, right? Yes. Yeah. But he's not, not everybody's a natural right salesman. Now. He's, he's like a natural force of energy. So yes. you just buy it because he shows up. Well, you'll buy like, into him. It's, it's right? like he just compels yeah. your hand to go, uh, I'll take it. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. I'll they, just take it. Like, they, I don't know why. Like, I'm so excited. Like, I don't know why. I'm, I'll take well, it. Well, they like, have that natural <laughs> belief, right? Like yeah, at yeah. the end of the day, like people, they want to believe in something. They want to have hope. They Absolutely. want to be excited. And when you're around somebody like that, that is just pure energy. Yeah. Yeah. You can't help but love it. exhausting. Yeah. He's so much yeah, fun. He's he such is. a good guy. He's so much such fun. Love. They are. Yeah. It was funny because when I'm around him, I actually go down. Like I start to get caught. I don't know why that is, but it's called balance. I love it. Maybe. That's, that's why you know. can't have two of you in the room at the same time. I, I think it's self-preservation, right? Like, cause it's like, no, <laughs> we're going to just explode, you know, cause we'll start both vibing and then just explode. That's it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I should say to my grandparents, I should, because this has actually been a big, see, I skipped, I started at the, the basement suite and I should have started earlier. Okay. Um, my grandparents had, my grandfather in particular and his family had uh, grocery stores in uh, all through East Van and on like South Granville and things. And, mm. and so that was I grew up very much with dinner table conversation about business. And that was probably one of the biggest things that I sort of, and, and community and he, they had stores, 
they were back when retails were retailers were the you know standard Vancouver lot community store that sold the basics and there was one in every neighborhood right um, and you know going through the depression like I heard stories about how you know my grandfather people didn't have money to pay for groceries so he said to them no it's okay and there was people who did so it all balanced out and they helped mm. each other and my grandpa said you know when you have the money you'll come back and you'll you'll still shop here and then you'll help somebody else and that was very much the way business was done then um, and then it was the big box stores came in I think it was Safeway at the time in BC and he said they're going to ruin they're going to ruin it all so he turned it into a real estate holding company and then that was it but you know it what do you do there was yeah I mean it was um it was nice though growing up with that because that was you know his business philosophy it was just it was ethical and it was good and he believed mm -hmm. in neighborhoods and communities and people so I think that always is the you know the underpinning of my work it doesn't really matter what I do and I quite now at this age I think regardless of where I go if it's something I'm passionate about and I believe in that'll come through regardless of in industry you know right you can help people then it's a great profession at some point even if you help one person your entire career then I think that's a success so I love it it actually it's makes a ton like of sense a, to like me. a teacher like, yeah it's yeah. good yeah I, I, it's, it's true but <laughs> it's, a, it's a good way to go through it I mean what's, no, what's the purpose is. of this game really otherwise is. yeah try to help some people on the way through yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, really, it's it's not a long game. Right. So no. And I don't have any special talents. So I just have to like help people. That's like my big, you know, my choppy. That's background. a special talent. That's OK. I, I, I get that. <laughs> that's, that's, a that's, that's, a, that's a good talent, though. And it not is, you yeah, know, more yeah. people should either learn yeah. it or if they have it, exercise with like use it. Like don't just uh, yeah. hang on to it. It's but. it's nice now being where I am because I really appreciate, you know, when I was younger, I sort of you know, I would think, oh, I want a leadership position because I want some sort of a convertible car or something, some sort of attainment thing that I see the value now is that I can help change things, maybe move the needle a little bit right. in some way. And that's, I think, a real privilege to be able to be in that position. So, so can, you, can you explain a little bit then, like, what yeah. does BC Food and Beverage do? Like, tell me, like, if I'm, if I'm in a processor of some kind in the province, what, why would I join? What would I, what's, what's the gig? I think depending on the size of processor you are, might be different for what that is from a small, we're majority of our, I'd say probably about 75% of our members right now are in that small to medium mm -hmm. category, mostly small, I would say like under 30 employees. Um, often just as you know, with a business, you're one or two people in the business, multiple hats, you cannot be the expert in everything. And we're not the expert in everything either. I, I think personally, when I was a member prior, <clears throat> the biggest support was that I could pick up the phone and actually talk to somebody and say, this is what's going on. What do I do? How do I do this? Um, and if we don't have the answers, it's the big network of referrals to people because there's a ton of amazing supports within this industry as well. Um, and that community. Um, a lot of larger processors, of course, a lot, we do a lot of government relations and advocacy work, depending on what's going on for there. I mean, the essential service designation um, mm -hmm. during COVID, we were involved in that in, you know, getting that for processor workers, which we needed to sort of keep things moving. Um, yeah, I mean, tons of different supports. And I think we're pretty entrepreneurial at BC Food and Beverage. So we do pivot as well according to what's going on in the industry what the need is we were talking today about getting some programming to start um, giving some basically content on recession proofing businesses because i think, you know that's something that everybody but you know these are the things when we go in the office and you know i said to james our ceo like i think we need to get people prepared for this this is coming we it's know it's coming, coming right so buckle up let's see like let's get the content in there and the support for people for um and mm -hmm. a lot of that programs just even <clears throat> we have a with webc collaborations we're doing like we'll have a female founder mentorship program we're doing in the fall um really looking at right now like the different sort of segments in our business and who needs support and how uh, because it's not the same for everybody um, with every business. And if you have somebody who's newer to Canada, who has it, you know, just navigating through the government documentation is huge. So how do we support those members? I mean, you know, as a just reading person, government websites. 
is a support I, unto itself. Yeah, wow. you know, I had somebody call yesterday, who, you know, they're starting up, they have a restaurant, they have a salsa, they want to, you know, start selling it in the farmer's market. And they're like, where do I need to go? And I felt bad actually telling them to go to the CFIA website because they're like, Jeez. oh, all the information will be there. And I was like, a lot of information will be there. And it's, it's hard for people to navigate. That, that. is probably and one of the worst websites to, to navigate. Just labeling a, is pages and pages it is and shit and you don't even know what you're yeah. supposed to be looking at but that's we get those are the a lot of the calls we get right and it's just that i'm trying to get through this i don't know how and you know mm -hmm. there's there's just always things it's the emergency things too like you know somebody's doing a delivery too and it seems like such a small thing but for a small member it's big to them they need a certain type of pallet and if they do not deliver their products on this pallet to this store, they're getting turned away and getting fines, twelve hundred dollars or something right. like that. So you know, it's one of those things, and it's like to be able to call and it's like, hey, we can put it out to the network. Pallet was there in an hour, and you know, crisis wow. averted. But yeah, there's a lot of those things, and everybody's different that way. But sort yeah. of eighty percent of the stuff that comes up is the same usually, and then there's that twenty percent that's all the little things. So the end of the day we care about it probably a bad elevator pitch but i think that's we try to keep those real relationships with people no but i think that's that's sort of what you're trying to figure out right is it's hard like yeah. you start doing things in the province or in the country for that matter yeah. and you don't know the rules and regs and like what is allowed yeah. and not allowed and yeah. when do you need a nutritional panel and when don't you and when do you yeah. need to disclose all ingredients and when can you maybe not or whatever yeah. the thing is so yeah. you're saying like, so it, of, of, you know, like what are sort of the, the FAQs that you get so that if someone's listening and in that spot, because I know what happens, someone will sit there for a month or two and just dwell on it and not sleep because they think it's, oh my God, I got to be the only one in the world who's got this question, not realizing that that, that is probably on a super the FAQ question. as way up there is the number one in five questions to ask. Yeah. I mean, oh gosh. They're so, we get a ton of people coming, I mean, sort of demystifying around co-packing, commissary kitchens, having your own facility, um, distribution, when's the right time to go to distribution, and then to broker, um, the fees, I mean, that in itself, I, dealing with large retailers, yeah. and, you know, Pricing is always, you know. So, who do you have to do this, so Lisa? Like, are they phoning you and your boss? I told you. you I like told you. I read a lot, so I'm like a walking Google. So it's fine. I have it all. It's all good. <laughs> we have. So you're a one woman show. All, like, what's going on? Here. What's yeah, going on? What's so? You know, <laughs> if I phone BC Food and Beverage tomorrow, just for funsies and disguise my voice and start yeah. rattling a ton of questions, you're going to just sit there and answer away for me. Not saying Am that I, I would them do down? that. I might, I'll write Not them saying. down. I'll be like, this I can, this I can, this I can. We'll have, if we don't have the answer ourselves, we'll refer off to somebody that right. we know has the answers. So that's, right. you know, I think a big part of it that we can. Which is probably we'll why it's important with, if you're small, joining a, an organization like this is yeah. not the worst spend that you're going to have that month. No. Right? It's, you know, it's, it's a valuable resource. It is. To buy. I'm, not, I'm not trying to sell BC food and beverage to anybody, but I actually believe in a lot of these types of organizations because I, yeah. the, those FAQs that you think nobody's, they are FAQs. Seriously, everybody's asking the same questions, guys. And it's, you it can is. go to people and they'll help you get through most of them. But I, I, I also think, so I'm not selling BC food and BEV either, but, but <laughs> I, I think, because I think, I think that the role you play, like as you talk, what I hear is, um, I don't know if we have listeners that belong to BIAs or you know any of those sort of things, but I I feel like those are the roles that you know kind of those um, you know kind of business development groups were supposed to fill in the you know kind of like a chamber of commerce right but yeah. those have turned into money grabs or golf sessions or whatever or it's golf different sessions yeah. or or a place where consultants can kind of like fish from a barrel right and yeah. and um but what it it feels like you're doing is it, it it really is like the kind of this 
like it's like calling 411 right it's like i have a problem yeah. and i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know right i don't know all That's i know, it. I don't know. i've got to solve yeah. it and i don't know who i'm supposed to ask and when i look at google i get 18 you know kind of like five tips on how to do things where you're like <laughs> yeah it's not five things i just need one really good answer yeah. right like well and it's true yeah. though i mean i i think coming from you know the background i was a member and then you know and i was members and have been over the years a lot mm. of different associations for different mm -hmm. things yeah and they all serve different purposes for different reasons and i think for me with bc food and beverage what what I really liked about it, that it just was, it was down to earth. It was people that I could phone, I could get a hold of, um, you know, other organizations that I was a member of, and it was sort of necessary organizations. Like you kind of had to be a, a, right. a member mm -hmm. it, to be in that world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wouldn't, I'd get invites to a, two events that would happen that were big and, you know, for networking, things like that, they were good. They were often expensive. Um, but then I would get my renewal notice and, you know, sometimes I'd reach out to say, Hey, can we get help with this? We weren't big enough to get help. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what I kind of like about, you know, with BC food and beverage is that people call and, you know, somebody gets back to them and we try and figure it out. And we do, we sit around, I mean, at the office, something comes up and often, you know, I'll come in and say, Hey, you know, so-and-so has lost their space for processing and they need something immediately do you know of anybody and we'll sit and we'll brainstorm and you know we'll figure it out and it is a great community. who does that how cool is that i know wow. it's probably like the worst financial model in the world that we do i was gonna say it's coffee. really not probably based on sound business <laughs> like that's some hundred percent not who <laughs> why they do we that's really, why they do 10 golf tournaments a year because that's, that's good business <laughs> it is and i guess i for us like we're pretty like you know our mandate really is to help businesses succeed and what that looks like is Imagine that, eh? caring right like you know it's um yeah and then we figure out all the money stuff we like to polish that we're non-profit you know so we can't be too like smart in the business side of things so <laughs> good lord <Okay. laughs> I got so, it. I so, you, that. so this is cool because you 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 jump on to do community stuff and then what two days or two weeks was it two days later we go into pandemic mode or two weeks after you take the job? Yeah. So that, yeah, that was just like a, I just don't even know what, I mean, you kind of knew it was coming, but it was weird because I mean, I didn't know these people that I was working with yeah. and I didn't, yeah, it was just a, a, obviously such a strange time. And then also the panic that I'm like, I've just like left a job that I was stable in for a job now it is a nonprofit organization and, yeah. you know, reliant on, you know, our events at the time that we were doing. Um, and yeah, so I was like, wow, I hope I don't end up just being like this number that gets lost. And, you know, like I was half expecting to get laid off and I sort of everybody, you know, James, our CEO, like immediately had to divert all of his attention to, the emergency stuff, which there was much, and um, the PPE was one of the big ones because all the PPE supplies were directed to healthcare, which is totally understandable. Yeah. yeah. But it was also we needed all the PPE in the processing facilities, and nobody could get PPE, so right. it was like, okay, where are we going? So we became PPE slingers for a little while. We were happy to retire out of that business eventually, but you know, we were able to to get it and make it happen. But it was crazy all of a sudden to be in this world where you're like, you know, like we're a food and beverage association. Like, what are we doing? Like sourcing PPE and, but it was a need. And so everybody just kind of stepped up and it was just quick and getting information out and it was changing so quickly. That was the other mm -hmm. thing. Um, and trying to keep the food systems running during all of that was incredible. Um, I mean, I really have so much admiration for, the people that were doing that and, I, and especially the production workers um you know i don't think people realize that at that beginning that unknown and it was scary for people and you can't you know anybody who's been in a production facility and all of a sudden they're like oh everybody be six feet apart well that's not the way production it doesn't works. work like you it doesn't and you know people were scared and 
they didn't know what to do. And, you know, it was a really, really hard time for people. And, you know, people kept showing up and, and doing their jobs and making sure food kept going, even when everybody was panic buying and being all, you know, a little bit not so about that. But um, yeah, I don't know. It was, a, it was a funny, it was an interesting introduction to working there. But I just started picking up the phone and emailing people and saying, hey, like, how are you doing? Like, can we help? Like what's going on? I didn't know what else to do actually, except just start reaching out to people and, and saying what's going on. Like, how can we help you? And a long, long time ago, when I started out in sales, um, they had brought in somebody who was the top international salesperson for Apple and really great guy. But his biggest thing was, you know, talking to people about what keeps them up at night. And he said, that will be the root of everything. He said, personal life, just knowing what keeps people up at night. And that sort of really came to me during that time. It's like, what's keeping everybody up at night? And what does that look like? Right. And can we help one of those things in just even a little way to help them a little bit, sleep a little bit better at night? Mm. And yeah, it was mm. a day at a time. And I don't know, they kept me around. I got a promotion during that. So something must have worked out okay. You're just, just a rock star. I don't know what happened, but it worked out. Have you noticed? This is sort of leading, I guess, but have you noticed that <laughs> in our little world or our little industry, because I participate in this one too, and obviously the other side, I'm not paying attention to either of you at this moment. Um, <laughs> so what I'm getting at is that we went from one frying pan to mm -hmm. another, to mm -hmm. potentially another, yeah. to potentially a couple more that we're not quite too sure what they even look like at this moment. Did you yeah. realize, I mean, I know for a fact, I knew prior that we were light in processing um, in general in the province. Like I already knew yeah. that. And to some degree, just yeah. because if you wanted to do larger runs, really tough in BC, you could do some small runs for the most part, yeah. large runs of, of whether it's cans, bottles, it didn't really matter. It was tough to yeah. find. But yeah. once, you know, shit hit the fan and we went through all the stock outs, we yeah. including quickly the holy we don't have a lot of processing in this province. We really don't. Yeah. And yeah. then now that we're running tight on supplies, I mean, again, it's leading, but what's it, what's it, what's it shown you since you've been in like, what are you seeing? Yeah. I mean, supply chain, obviously, I mean, we, we knew when COVID hit, there was going to be supply chain issues. Um, of course there was a, a series of, you know, 50 other events that happen further impacted supply yeah. chain. Um, you know, it became interesting though. I mean, I think people, smaller companies were able to adapt even their recipes and say, we can change this. Whereas our much larger suppliers were often the ones saying, well, no, we can't do that. Like we can't change this one little ingredient. Or it'll take 18 months or 24 months to clear by the time it was yeah, to go through. And I mean, even going into retailers, like you make packaging changes and that can be a huge issue. Right. Um, you know, we went through for lids for a long time. I mean, it's still an issue, but still an issue. you know, we're like, you know, and it was like, we can get a lid, but not the lid that yeah. it's supposed to be on there. And it's like, okay, like let's stand back. Like it's a lid, like it's okay if we change it. Yeah. Um, but we still see that a lot. I think people... I hope people can find a little more flexibility with things with food because I, it's much more natural for us to have um, differences in our food and packaging and things like that. But we've come, we've become a society where things that's so important to us, where it has to look this way and be this way. And, you know, the supply chain issues are going to be around for a long time. Um, the people I feel very bad for are the ones that need a lot of our members who have, they're not the huge volume buyers. They're just getting squeezed out and they right. can't get the supplies. You know, if mm -hmm. they, their product is 80% oats and somebody else just comes along who has the money and says, well, I'm buying all the oats because there's a shortage, you know, they're the ones who really suffer. And I think, you know, those are ones where we may see more businesses where that's the case with it. Um, there's just, yeah, there's so many issues with it. And I mean, the, the floods, of course, the infrastructure that brought on a whole other understanding of, you know, where we could be potentially, but, you know, I hear, I listen to my friend group all the time because to hear how it impacts them, because I have a different lens on it. And, 
you know, they're like all out of, I remember soy milk was a big one and everybody was all, they couldn't get their soy creamer. And, you know, it was like the end of the world that they could. And I said, well, you know, you could try coconut because that is available. It's like, well, no, I need soy creamer. But that's not really a normal world to live in. And, and I think, you know, maybe there's a bit of a benefit sometimes to people not having everything they need at all times. Um, you know, it's quite, you know, it's a, it's a big first world problem that, you know, we can't get our soy. Yeah. Cream Phil and I've talked it. about that. I think one thing that even retailers yeah. learned probably during this mess is that in a, in a, in a 36 foot run in a store, is it really necessary to have 15 brands of pasta and 75 yeah. cuts of each brand? Probably yeah. not. The world will survive and yeah. your customers will survive too with probably a good, better, best and 20 yeah. cuts of each. And that's more than enough. Now, if you still want to do 36 feet because you're worried about yeah. supply chain and you know we all want to eat whatever we want to yeah. eat, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. I mean, but, I think you know, it, it realigns people maybe to something that's a little more reasonable and real and it's more real world right the rest of the yeah. world outside it's of still. north america the rest oh, of the world fantasy you know you you deal with shortages right like no yeah. retailer says i'll have it here for you tomorrow they just go we didn't get it suck it up yeah. go buy something else or yeah <laughs> right? we're like, a very we're in a very yeah, entitled part very of the world first right? world yeah like i mean yeah. the three of us are in this mess i mean i i, I you know i've worked for yeah. food, two, two food distributors we do some food processing like we're, i i see yeah. everybody work with retailers but yeah. i mean if i talk to a lot of our friends say your best friend and you know the brother and sister-in-law who yeah. are not necessarily in these fields they really don't have a clue as to one one might because of the industry she's in the other yeah. two are in education not that that's a bad thing yeah. not to criticize but it's not yeah. really on the pulse the lens, of right not on they the pulse the of, yeah. Yeah. you know if, even if i talk to amelia downstairs <clears throat> who's you know an accountant yeah they don't really appreciate the fact that it's a bit of a shit show out there at this moment it's not and it's not what the yeah. media is telling you either necessarily like there's this, it's the clear no. picture is a little a little interesting not so clear yeah no. Well, and I remember saying to friends I, like a while ago, and I said, there's going to be supply chain shortages. And they were like, oh, you know, it'll be fine. Like, and of course now they're starting to see, and it's supposed, it's starting to impact more. And I said, there's going to be increases you're going to start seeing. Oh, wait, and we it, haven't started, right? But yeah. And I mean, it's, you know, now I was speaking with a friend and, you know, she said to me, well, she's done a food budget now. And this was new to her because all of a sudden, like as we're seeing, and this is where we're getting into recession and fuel prices, everything's costs are going up. Um, but we've lived in a really, in our society where it's been more and more and more and bigger and cheaper and mm -hmm. more consumption. Right. And I right. don't know that it's really benefited anybody in any meaningful ways. Um, you know, even our restaurant size of meals, you know, like they've just been getting larger and larger and there's a part of me you know in restaurants they're either going to increase the prices or lower the quantity size and well you've seen it now that's like, yeah that's happening now. lower the yeah. size but yeah and that's i laughed actually because i i ordered um hot wings the other night and i finished them and there was something in me that was like it just didn't feel like enough so then i went back and i counted and there were seven instead of ten and i was like this isn't a bad thing though. Maybe people need smaller portions. Maybe we just, like, maybe, you know what? Maybe that's all good. Maybe we should just cut back a little bit. But I have yeah. noticed a plate of pasta is creeping to 30. Yeah. You know, and steaks are now well yeah. into the mid 40s. Yeah. Like so it's, it's starting to, it's starting to, you know, just, I mean, I McDonald's mean, now is 15 yeah. bucks. Yeah. yeah. It's not cheap anymore, right? No. It's, it's, no. it's not, it's not, you know, we will still function. North America will be the yeah. least of the issues on the planet. We'll have people yeah. all over this world starving, literally, yeah. you know, mass starvation. And we'll still eat and we'll still get our things. Yeah. But it's just interesting. I, I, I'm just curious to see, like, because you've come from outside of it. Naturally, Splendid was one sort of um, commodity. It yeah. wasn't as diverse mm -hmm. as what you're dealing with now. Yeah. The education yeah. system is completely outside of um, yeah. this world. Right. Yeah. So it is, I'm kind of curious to see, like, I mean, it's got to be a whole different, like, wow mm -hmm. to you where him and I have been stuck in this for 40 plus years. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've seen it enough times, not as bad as this necessarily, but the, uh, definitely the, kids, and I, the kids and I had a, a budgeting discussion because I said to them, listen, we're, you know, we're, we're going to sub out um, another meal with, with legumes or beans of some sort. And yeah. I said, look, 
let's do the math together, right? And so we went through the grocery mm-hmm. bill and I kind of showed them, oh, that's not so bad. And I go, okay, yeah, now I'm going to show you what the grocery bill looked like. Same grocery bill, you know, because we buy regular things. I'll show you what it looked like six months. And they're like, wow, it's so much cheaper. And I go, yeah, yeah. So you see that, um, like, like, so if I buy, like, for like, this is, you know, oh, okay, it's a little more expensive. No, no, that's a whole meal. So, <laughs> you know, that, um, you know, Fridays, we usually, you know, we, we skip the dishes or we or we'll, yeah. we'll order local or something. And I said, this is a whole Friday meal. So yeah. now we don't do the Friday meal. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay. So if you want to keep that, then now we got to figure out, you know, we got to cut some stuff out. Something's right? got to right. give, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, not a bad thing, I think, yeah. for people to, to learn It's still that. a, Kids a to first world that. conversation, right? Like, the rest is, of the world I, is not having this conversation. Oh, we're spending a little yeah. more money or we're not ordering out. Right? It's not. I'm yeah. buying the steaks at we're home now, but not yeah, buying yeah. the steak outside. Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, good yeah. for you. What yeah, a good what for a, you. Oh, so much trooper. suffering. You know? How like you right now, it? I look at people like, well, people are working, you know, a lot of um, like minimum wage or just above minimum wage right, right now. And I mean, yeah. you're getting, you know, most of my friends are sort of in that that middle class making good wages, you know, established, Mm -hmm. they're feeling a pinch right now. Mm -hmm. And then you, you look at, like, I always think about like the single mother who's making minimum wage. In our city. Like, can you imagine? Like, like, there is no extra. Like there wasn't any extra. I don't even think there's enough to get through. Never mind extra. I think you're now playing credit card games or uh, finding ways to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how you do it. I really don't. I, I don't. I don't know how you do it. No, and I think a lot of people just aren't going to be able to. And that's the thing. I mean, when we're looking at, um, you know, like the food banks and things like that, like how quickly the need is going up there. And it's, you know, it's shocking. And, but you have to, I mean, at a certain point too, the, you know, yes, we have to make sure that the, the food banks and all of those, but where are we making changes that's actually making life affordable for people and that so they can actually buy their groceries. Yeah. And, you know, somebody who is working full time should be able to pay their rent and feed themselves and their children. But you would think like, that, 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 yeah, the, the base, the, you know, the, the basic thing in our country for sure would be if I work an honest full time job, full time hours. Yeah. Um, let's say with the, with the, your partner, spouse, whatever, and yourself, because yeah. top one, one person in our city, you know, as well as I do that. Ain't yeah. gonna happen. So you need two, but yeah. two at minimum wage in this city, shit, rent, rent takes half of the yeah. gross, not yeah. the net money, the gross yeah. money. Yeah. You know, before you start, you're, 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 yeah. you're, you're, you're dead. I mean, you're, you, you can't move. Then yeah. you want to have a cell phone because you got a communicator, some nice season. Yeah. Life. You know, you haven't hit food yet. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know how people do it. And I, I just don't no, know. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's worrisome, like watching with everything rising right now, what's happening when there's already those, those structures that are so stressed and yeah. like what happens then at that point and how do we, you know, and that's why too, even like, you know, the retail, when I saw that about retail and I, it was one of the reasons I was so fired up about it because it's like, when there's so many people under so much pressure right now, mm-hmm. we're not in a regular time where no, everything's but they're still charging and- full listing fees. Yeah. They're still fining like- vendors like crazy when it's really nothing you can do. They're still yeah. not allowing you price increases because you can't include gas. Yeah. You can't include oil. You can't include shipping. Yeah. You can't include wages. Well, what the fuck are you going to yeah. include in pricing then? Like, what yeah. do you want me to, are we allowed yeah. to eat too? Or is it just the, just the, yeah. the Galen and the family allowed to eat? Can the rest of us have a dinner too? Yeah. Like, like I, how does this work? Right. <laughs> well, he pisses me off. That, I'm sorry. I don't care. He's re- I was in re- retail way too long. It drives me nuts when yeah. the attitude seemed to have actually gotten worse. Yeah. It's like they left the planet and yeah. didn't see the reality of, of what was behind. And instead of like, that's when you have though big consolidation and when you say like have left the planet because you've left it from a perspective of seeing what's going on in real life in a lot of ways and so they kind of have left the planet like they're not you're the guys they're the guys that could help the little guys like they Mm -hmm. could actually help a lot of the processors because i think again one thing we're all going to learn very quickly is if you want to protect your food your food supply chain you better do a lot more local 
Oh, absolutely. And not just local growing and stuff like that. Local yeah. processing. Yep. Whether absolutely. that's processing vegetables, meats, yep. packaging of them. Yeah. If you don't control it here. You wait for wheat to come, you know, go from Canada to Italy. Yeah. Because they use our wheat in their pastas too to yeah. come back. Yeah. Shit, you should have skipped the steps and just done it here. Yeah. And that's actually Arlene Dickinson when she um, was speaking in our event. That was exactly what she spoke of. Um, oh, okay. And that we, we have to change that. There you go. You're a visionary. You're just no, right up there. Visionary. We just happen. No, we're just doing this way too long is a problem, <laughs> right? Where you just but, see the, the holes. Yeah. Well, it was exciting actually listening to her because she's really, I, she's passionate about that in Canada and she really believes in it. And it's actually nice to see somebody who has sort of that notoriety that is a champion for our food, like mm. our, our entire food across the country and in BC and it's just nice to hear somebody believing in it like that for saying, sure. yeah, I'm actually going to raise money for this. I'm going to invest in this. I'm going to nurture this. And because it's there and it, it's needed and it's necessary. And it's, it really, it's the basis of what we need. It's, it's a survival need. Like but it's, it's not it's, even it's a food. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not like a technology in or, Yeah. It's like not it's, a new phone that I really don't need. I really want, but I don't yeah. need. It's you know, a meal food. is we kind of, have it. yeah, but kind yeah. of, that's kind of important at the end of the day. Yeah. But we, you know, and, and, you pick know. our apples here and then send them somewhere else to get processed. And then, and then to come back, back processed. And, and you're thinking, come yeah. on guys, really? It's crazy. You know, seriously. You know. I hope we'll see a lot more manufacturing happening. Well, here. what I'm hoping is organizations like yours will, will hopefully assist in doing that. Right. Is that, you know, yeah. and because you're, you're a nice East fan person, I know you'll do that. That's just bred into sort of East Van and the community aspect of it, right? Is that you got to look out for each other, right? Well, yeah. again, you get one it's kick true. at the cat, right? When the game's only so long, yeah. we don't help each other out now. When are you going to do it? Yeah. I don't think we should kick cats, though, Kenny. It's East Van. You, know. you know, I mean, it, it, was, it was in vogue years ago. <laughs> Probably not anymore. <laughs> I mean, I listen, I had, a Nono who, I had a Nono who kicked the cat because, you know, she was in the garden and, you know, tomatoes, oh, no. cat, tomatoes, cat, cat, tomatoes, cat, yeah, now tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. Hey, trouble. I don't kick I kind cats. of instigated it, though. I, I lock things up. I, don't, I keep, take care of it, Phil. Don't worry. Oh, boy. No, boy. I could give you stories, though. Ah. Uh, on that note, Elisa, yeah, we'll leave it we're at very, very glad that you joined us. <laughs> Thank you. It was fun. Thanks for coming on. I'm, I'm glad that we're yeah, done. That's we're, so we're funny. Really I'm glad, glad it, even yeah. the small world aspect was pretty cool. I know. Yeah. It's funny how that happens. It's like, I'll have to let Vanda know to listen to this too. I know she'll be like she's famous now because you've talked about Vanda on here. Vanda's been on the show. Name. Did I say the last? No, I don't know if like, I did. No, if, we can put um, on the next one. We'll yeah. spin it out. If uh, <laughs> if people want to find you, what's the best way to find you? Uh, I'm looking for something like clever to say there, but I was like, it's just going to probably end up being like inappropriate or something. LinkedIn, okay. great way to connect with me. Okay, <laughs> people want to find me. I don't know. <laughs> that's another podcast, folks. We'll do that one later. Know, we'll talk about cats and whatever Lisa was going to the she was going down. Good we'll hold on to that. It's getting late for me. I start to get uh, punchy, you know. That's all, all good. That's all love it. <laughs> we love it. Um, thank you so much. Thanks for joining thank us. You. Yeah, and we'll maybe right. have you back on in the new year. Let's get through this fall, dying to see what happens in our mm-hmm. little world in the industry. Yeah. Maybe give us Hopefully lots of good things. I think so. I think, again, you know what? The doom and gloom is kind of what it is. But at the end of the day, you know what? We all seem to get through it. And we'll just have to get There's st- always opportunity in it. There's always- stronger as a community, too. That's why we start relying yep. and, and, you know. Yeah. And if any of the listeners, any question you have about food processing, apparently Elisa picks up the phone and answers all of them. Every single Google. question. She's yeah, a little bit. Google. I heard that's that. actually the secret is I Google everything. I'm just a good Googler. That's all. You're hilarious. <laughs> I don't think so. I love it. Oh, um, thank okay. you for right. joining us. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Thanks. I'll stick around okay. for a bit. Okay. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Lisa. Bye. How cool She's is cool. that? No, it's you know. She's cool. What's 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 nice is is. I think you could actually, I think, you know what, I think you could actually phone her and just knowing that, you know, knowing her, she'd help. Like you're going to get help we, and it's hard right, out there. It really is. We should, um, we should call her with a fast, fast thoughts and try. Oh, and she stump would do her. fast thoughts. We should try and stump her though. <laughs>
That would be funny. So why are you being the mean one now? Like seriously? No, no, I, I, I'm amused. I, I actually don't think I would be able to. I don't think her. you would. I, I, yeah, I don't. That's think what I. Still. That's what I love about it, actually, because I, I think. Well, I wouldn't be able you know to what? If you think about it, she mean. led us to our first fast thought. She did. Right. It was sort of down that 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 yeah. spin of, you know, me getting pissed at Loblaws or mm. whatever I was mad at that day. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I it's find cool. it interesting. I do. It's, I find it interesting. Cool to, even her career path. Talk to someone like her and and see yeah. you know, what she's thinking about. So yeah, just yeah. I was working with her, like to see what she's seen because you know she came from such different, you know, education is is is, is a different industry. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just yeah. I mean. Yeah. I think yeah. Um, the the segue for me. I don't know if like we're at an hour, so I don't know if anyone's still listening, but. Um, I guess I'm, I think knowing, like helping us get answers that, that you need, like, cause we, you know, we've heard, we've, we've talked about the shortages. We've talked about recession, um, you know, kind of by the time you hear this, we'll have done a fast thoughts on how you retain employees, um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, kind of some techniques to, to figure out how to do that as well. But I think if you have questions on what's coming, um, ping us with them. And, and I think Kenny and I will Absolutely. definitely try and help you answer them. I think- Or um, we'll get people on that might yeah, be really so, geared toward. So, you know, like one of the things that um, I'm reading this week, right? Like there are a lot of um, venture capital funds that are kind of telling startups right now to kind of conserve cash because you know, there won't be any round raises coming. Um, and so you think the implication on the industry is actually pretty significant, right? So you, you have like kind of startups out there that are burning cash. Some of them are retail, some of them are tech. Because sometimes when you hear startup, you think tech. But There's lots there of are retail lots and lots of retail that are burning cash right now to build volume. And if they've got venture capital funds backing them that are now going, listen, you, you need to slow down for a minute. You need to conserve your cash and make it through the next two years. The very next day is going to be layoffs, right? Like you're, you know, you're going to, you're going to start seeing companies cut bodies so that they can conserve some of those funds. Right. And that leads us right to the kind of the dreaded R that nobody wants to talk about. Right. So, wow. um, it's sort of it sort of fuels them, right? Because I think there might be listeners yeah. who aren't in the industry yeah. who don't appreciate or don't don't know that when Phil says burning cash, they are quite literally, you know, doing that to, to some degree. In that, you know, you're they're spending way more than they're bringing in, and a yeah. lot of it's it's with intentional. The it's, it's intentional. intentional. Yeah, yeah. Some are some are for reasons that yeah. probably aren't the wisest, and yeah. others are because it's just trying to get the scale, it's the right thing, trying yeah. to get the thing, and it's not the wrong thing to do. But there are a lot of people now. So if even if you're venturing into this game, I think it's still a good time. And I think there's lots of opportunity, mm -hmm. but you need to come in understanding that you're probably going to have to fund a bunch of it by yourself. And then what that means is you have to figure out your scope and scale before you start. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it may not be running to law of laws and Sobies and mm -hmm. save on first. It might be dealing with a lot of the locals and taking it slow. Mm -hmm making sure that the cash is coming in and actually accruing, not just um, dwindling, dwindling away. Yeah. I, I, and I think if you're in it and you're hoping for a fundraiser, you're looking for cash somewhere, it's also, it's going to get tougher. Some you got to take note of, right. It, it might be tougher right now. Um, I think it's going so to be filled. I mean, you can cash, say it, so. it's going to be tougher because yeah. it's, there's, there's that much more risk coming. Yeah. And again, it's not that you want to be doom and gloom, but the reality is, mm -hmm. you know, things are yeah. to, to play the way they're going to play. They're going to play out the way they play. It's got nothing with you and I agree yeah. with it, disagree with it. It's yeah. going to play the way it plays. Correct. Correct. Right. So we are yeah. walking into tougher times and I think we just need to be all ready for it. But don't stifle the entrepreneurism and don't stifle the innovation. Just be a shit ton more cautious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But we don't want people to stop doing things. Heaven forbid, mm -hmm. my God. And it's but, really a mess. But uh, but definitely like so I think I think um not to kind of 
because <laughs> now we've ended it on a gloomy note. But but no, I it's honestly, really challenging because we got people that we can have on, like yeah, like Lisa, who are, are yeah. who are resources yeah. that actually want to help you and see you yeah. grow, and you can grow even in tough times coming up. Big deal. Yeah, and, and anyway, so we we do we do go. we do want to help. So absolutely, if you have questions and you're kind of wondering like where can you get answers, like hit us, us. up. You know, ping us. We'll find us. the answers can, for you. Or you can connect you with reach somebody. us. We'll we'll put the our. I mean, you can find us through the website. You can find us through on LinkedIn, social media, easy, easy. LinkedIn, like all the time. But if if you don't, you can you know uh, podcast at thiscommercelife dot com and yep. and shoot us a note, and then, and then we'll do our best to see what we can do for help you. you sort out whatever the question is. So yep, yeah, awesome. Okay, buddy boy. Awesome. Very that good. That is it, sir. That was a very interesting podcast. Enjoyed yeah. that one. Thank you again, Elisa. And thank you, everybody, yeah. for listening. Hopefully, you guys all made it to an hour and five minutes. I hope. <laughs>